So then we are back with the modern understanding from the time of the second tabernacle services where we find then the prophecy of Yerushiahu being truth. This translation used is from then the Aramaic English translation from the prophets of Israel came then the original manuscripts of the time and the Aramaic is from these documents of the Hebrews of old indicating then for us the understanding of the time of the end and then the 61st chapter of Yerushiahu then gives us the proper perspective where we are at time-wise as per then the Creator's calendar. As was predicted before, the 21st of this month was a hoax. There is absolutely nothing going on because it's not part of the Torah's calendar. So then let's explore a bit what it means the Torah calendar and how was then secretly placed where then in the past this information was not known. There was then a period of time, the time of the seat, from 1009 until 2009 per their Gregorian's calendar. So if you want to know this period as per then the Creator's calendar, you understand it's from 6009 until 7009. As you can understand it from the scripture, each day then of creation is a thousand years then you understand this age lasted roughly seven thousand years so then it begins to understand the Torah in its calendar as per then the prophecies of Yerushiahu you find sections in Ezekiel you find sections in Daniel distinct times pointing to the Torah in its calendar so how is that it started? It started with the creation and then the counting of time as per the understanding of the lunar view of every month, then describing the time of the month, then the Aviv barley, the every year's starting, and then also every day as sun up and sun down, determining the day. So at the moment where so many people are coming out of their caves because they understand absolutely nothing is going to take place as they come out of their caves ridiculously with their heads down, obviously downcasted then it's important informing them the understanding of the Torah so at least they have the true calendar in front of them as they come out of this pagan ridiculous calendar they only cost them their jobs their future and their plans because they have to restart as they come out of their caves and they realize they were then deceived so then our quest starts in Leviticus the 23rd chapter as many people don't understand sometimes the holy instructions and they tend to shrug their shoulders because of it however you have to understand how then the Creator's calendar started. So then Yahweh very wisely, he decided to use his holy mikras or holy feasts to determine then heaven and earth's relationship. It's not truly complicated, however it takes time so then we understand what Shaliak Shaul was speaking, known as the Apostle Paul however those names do not exist neither Apostle neither Paul because Apostle is from a pagan language it does not mean anything and then Paul means tiny you know tiny not very big in the Greco language meaning then it's a mocking word so then try to verify then the situation and then name him as who he is Shaliak Shaul he explained then when a person is saved then a person must renew the mind with the Torah with the basics of the instructions and for those who are from the Gentile world they started then obviously with Leviticus the 23rd chapter because it gives them where they are at at the moment it's important in studying what the Messiah did absolutely but then if you have the understanding of the Messiah and you do not know where you are at during this time 
of so much paganism and lack of understanding of the Creator's calendar, then sometimes what you share regarding the Messiah sometimes does not match with the reality of the time. So as this 2012 it's absolutely a joke, hoax, junkie, it's important then understanding what Torah teaches. That's where then we find ourselves studying these holy documents, particularly the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. So then, Leviticus the 23rd chapter is composed by the first, second and third sections. The first section, Leviticus the 23rd chapter from the first verse unto the 21st verse. This section is then the spring feast. Because the Messiah then he came and he completed the spring feast. What does it mean? The nation of Israel then they practiced these spring feast for more than a thousand years practicing for the coming of the Messiah. Why were they practicing for so many centuries? Because they had to put their flesh under the control so then they would understand what it meant how to handle his anointing for the maintenance of the soul of the Gentiles. So then, the 22nd verse of the 23rd chapter of Leviticus gives us in the time of the Gentiles. The 23rd chapter, 22nd verse, is then equals to the Megillah of Ruth, explaining Gentile world as then grafted in a vine. You have to understand the concept, meaning strangers coming to the knowledge of the truth. And then the last section of it you find then from the 23rd verse of the 23rd chapter until the 44th verse of the 23rd chapter you find then the autumn feast. The autumn feast is not yet completed. So the mistake the world has made was then the understanding then the Torah was then abolished. It was absolutely wrong. When those translators, they were confronted with those Megillas, they were reading those documents, they did not understand half of the Torah, half of the prophets were completed, and the other half was not completed. So then, when you understand the Hebrews, the Hebrews scripture or the recordings of Hebrews, those are for the Levites performing the services in the Holy of Holies and also in the Tabernacle. So then they received the understanding in Hebrews 7.12 then the regular scripture speaks of then a change. But it's not a change of replacement, it is a change of completion. There was an update then to the Levitical laws and also the Torah because of a completion of the first for the objective of the completion of the second. So the laws are wholly inactive. However, only the section of it related with sacrifices were then completed. So then we have to find the information regarding then the autumn feast. And we are, during the time of the restoration, where then we are returning to the truth of the holy cities as per the Messiah's instructions. So then, we find ourselves then waiting for the first holy city. The first holy city is located in the land of Cush in Africa, as you can read Yeshiahu 1.8. If you read this chapter, you find then Yahweh tabernacling. Tabernacling means then the actual fact of doing tabernacle or tabernacling amongst the fears. This means outside of the city of Jerusalem would be absolutely insanity. If you understand it per the first tabernacle service. But we are speaking of the Second tabernacle service because from the 60th chapter of Yerushiahu until the 66th gives you then a time of the end. So it can't be the first service, it has to be the second service. So then we find in 
tabernacle amongst the fears, and the fears understanding meaning a filtering system, where then when the city is ready, is going to be absolutely filtered as per instructions, as then Yahanan was in his first holy city. Thus then restoration. It's not a new movement. It's simply restoring what Yahana had started. So then, from the viewpoint of Yerushahu, we are during the time of the restoration. The Mishia, however, he explained the time of reduction. In the 24th chapter of Mitzchiyahu, the first gospel, you find this section of it, where the Mishia obviously was in the temple, he was teaching, and then the people got excited, and obviously the Mishia, they wanted him to be their king, and he was. But the people during his time, they wanted himself as king and restore then the kingdom of Shlimon. The Mishia was not for it. The Mishia simply said he wants his kingdom yet to come to be established. So then the people, they were kind of a, with a pace in the past, a pace in the future, and they did not understand what the Mishia was explaining. But then the Mishia went further. Then he was taken out of the temple, obviously, they resumed the service, and the people got excited again because he was the living Torah. He was explaining what Yahweh had for his people. And then he was taken up to the mountain and shown then the temple and the city, and then the Messiah already started. He said, be aware. The Messiah already indicated they were on the wrong side of the understanding. Let no person deceive you. Because the people were deceived. He was then teaching the kingdom to come government. And they wanted the kingdom of Shilimon restored. That's why you read then be aware. Be aware. Don't let any person deceive you. And then he explains why. And then at the end he explains the time of reduction. Where then prior of the autumn feast or vengeance, his people have to be secluded in the holy cities so then they won't die. Because vengeance was never experienced before. And whatsoever Yahweh spoke must be absolutely done and then vengeance can, can start. So then, during the time of the Messiah, we understand that he spent 490 days ministry. And during his time, he went out of his way, he went out of the city, and he spent time with Samaritans for two days. The Messiah indicated 2,000 years of rulership in the earth. This means, whatsoever prophecy you find in the Holy Scripture has to fit until these 2,000 years then expired. Because relates with the history of the planet. The very end of it. The Messiah was born in 4999 per the Creator's calendar. How do we find this? The computer was able to reverse the time from our time based upon the lunar view of every month. Extremely precise. Then we find also the great start of Bethlehem during the time of the Messiah, and also the census, and many astronomical facts of the time. And then the computer was able to calculate this precise time, based upon the ancient documents of the period, based upon then the lunar eclipses, then was found, 4999, first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. That's why you hear then the Messiah tabernacling, with his people. So when you read it in Yeshiahu 1 8, then you find Yahweh tabernacling amongst the fears on the land of Cush. What do you think there is? There is no tabernacling outside of Jerusalem if you have your reference point as the first tabernacle service. But then have this in mind. Yeshiahu from the 60th chapter until the 66th is replete with the future 
prophetic understandings of the autumn feast. Then you begin to understand what then the prophet was explaining. Tabernacle means tabernacle, the with his people at the first, and then later the Messiah said, Go to the fort around the world and tabernacle with the Gentiles. So then you begin to understand where it's going to be at, the land of Cush. So then, 4999, the Messiah was placed on a pole, 5032. The spring feast lasted for over a year. So he spent time very safely, 5031. When you understand 2,000 years or two days the Messiah spent with him, you find 2,000 years. 7031. We are in 7012, gives us then 20 years roughly until the end without a reduction. So the time truly is very short. So then we understand and never again the world should be taken by this abrupt end such as this Mayan calendar and Hindu calendar and some other calendar. The world won't end with abrupt dates. It takes a transitional time. When you read then Revelation the 20th chapter you are not reading the time of the end. You are reading a section of it related with a layer of understanding far back in the past. 20th chapter of Revelation is giving you then the thousand years granted to the Messiah and a thousand years granted to Nahashatan. That's where you get your thousand and the other thousand. But then the world is absolutely replete with lies and lack of understanding of what it meant these thousand years. So then the thousand years of the Messiah, it was granted when he was born. So the Messiah was born in 4999. He then was already the king. Thus the ruler of the Messiah in this age for a thousand years. And in a thousand and nine. With the destruction of the tomb. And in a thousand and nine is pagan calendar. You understand 6009 per the Creator's calendar. Then there was a transitional time from the first and second services during the time of the Messiah. Transitional time. So the scripture available at the moment is speaking of the transitional time is mostly related with transition. From the first service to the second service. Roughly a hundred years of a transition. The problem is, we do not have the records from after Yahanan because those were burned. Those were in the Alexandrian library. Try to understand Asia and the area where Shaliak Shaul then founded so many holy cities, became holy cities later. Because Shaul the Shaliak lived during the time of the transition of the first and the second services. Then the relationship with the set apart from the holy cities and Gentiles were recorded and they were stored in the Alexandrian library. Those were the records. So Gentiles, when they read the scripture, they are reading transitional time of the first and second services. And then, truly, the relationship of Gentiles and set apart are related with after Yohanan's time. However, people were never taught the relationship of Gentiles and holy cities after Yohanan. Those were never recorded. Because the Greco and the Romans did omit this factor because precisely the reason why they persecute those holy cities because they want to give directives and they did a very bad job, did they not? So then we are returning to the truth, understanding then the documents we should be reading were those documents burnt in the Alexandrian library during the time of Constantine. So then, with this in mind, then when you read the 20th chapter of Revelation or then the Autumn Feast, you understand. It was a transitional time. The Messiah born as the king. Then came the transition of around 100 years. And then the second tabernacle services came. Then, in 6009, was a transition from the first thousand and the other thousand. 
from the Mashiach to Nahashatans, the time of the seat, where then people were teaching Mashiach outside of the Holy Tabernacles. Absolutely insanity. Doesn't exist. The Mashiach always was found in the Holy of Holies until the time of the closing. However, during the time of the seat, from 6009 to 7009, you find in a thousand years of the seat, where cities were no more. But we are returning to the truth. Then Yerushiahu said, those cities laid waste for many centuries, and when people read these verses, they thought, hmm, those are the vicinities of Jerusalem. No! Yerushiahu is explaining the future of the cities from the model city of Jerusalem as per the design of the Torah. So then he began to understand the relationship again with the cities and Gentile world. And then the secular world or Gentile world, they're going to be very busy doing trade because China has to lead yet the world's market. So when you read the 8th chapter, the third part of the ships, you understand there is a section of the earth on the line of the Indian Ocean and down southward. That's where the contamination with petroleum is going to be at. Those great mountains burning, those were not mountains thrown from the sky. He saw as if they were mountains burning. He saw petroleum burning and gushing out of the uh, earth. And then contaminating the entire ocean, the Indian Ocean, and southward until Singapore, where you find great concentrations of ships. Singapore. It's so then when you read the third part of the ships, it is the section of the Indian Ocean and then southward, where then the third part of this section only was then burned up. This means the remaining two-thirds would be on the other side, where China is at. Then you find the atomic blast then on land, because it informs you of fresh water. Fresh water is found on land. So then you begin to understand the simplicity of the Torah as then the Torah explains what takes place. So then we begin to be more acquainted with the transitional time. We are transitioning ourselves from the time of the seed back to the time of the truth. We are transitioning. So then, what was the discrepancy of 7009 and 7012? Why are these calendars of the pagan does not match then with the event? Because Yahanan, he was then a Shaliak, and he was the last Shaliak that spent time with the Messiah while completing the spring feast. Then we find those seven cities that the Messiah chose for the vengeance, and they were not in line with the Torah. So then, very wisely, Yahweh, Yeshua, decided then to take Yahanan aside, and he then started a holy city, as per instructions. So when you read the section of it, and after these, what the Messiah was making a reference of is not the previous chapter. And after these, meaning in line with the Torah's obedience. So the Messiah then brought Yahan into the holy city, they were practicing the second holy service. And then the Messiah had shown him visions from heaven. You can only have visions in a holy city. Outside of the holy city is always dreams. It's very consistent every time. So then Yahanan received those visions. And then Revelation, or the Aurum Feast, started with the fourth chapter. However, when you find then the Romans going through and sifting through those Megillas, as they were always military people, they were kind of saying, what is the problem? So they found then the Messiah complaining regarding some sort of uh, cities that were in sin. Put those first. You take care of the problems first. But then they went out of line with what the Messiah was explaining. 
First, the Mishia identifies himself as with the sound of many shofars. You start reading from the fourth chapter. Then you find the Mishia identifying himself first. Then you read the seventh chapter because the Mishia he is from the Holy of Holies. So you find then the Mishia taking the place of his father in the Holy of Holies. He is going to speak from the Holy of Holies. So then the Mishia from the Holy of Holies identifies himself and then Yohanan acquainted with the holy services of the tabernacle did understand. From then the Mishia explained what he expected from his people from the viewpoint of the Holy of Holies. Obviously he would teach them then the tabernacle. Seventh chapter. After giving him a tour and then showing his objective and of his people, then he gives his complaint. Then you read the first chapter from the 11th verse through the 20th. Then you read the second, the third, and then comes to the fifth, where then the Messiah shows the seals, or then the Megillah with the seven seals. And then comes the second portion of it where you read the fifth, the sixth, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Those are then the columns of the foundation. And then the rest of the chapters from the eleventh until the twenty-second are on top of it. And then you have to understand Yahweh then the top, making relationship with shofars and cups, heaven's layer, and then the consequences in the earth. These were then the structures where then Yohanan showed his people. And then, from those details of the platform on top of this structure, you find the ramifications that goes back to the prophets. Subsequently, then you have to go further until you reach the Torah. 23rd chapter of Leviticus. So the whole line must be going backwards and going forwards. However, in Hebraic understanding, going forward means you have to analyze the past. You have to analyze the past, understand the Torah. Then you have to, in quote, navigate from past and future as you understand the lineage, what the Torah is trying to teach you. So then becoming more and more clearer. So then he start with the fourth chapter, the Messiah then identifies himself. And then, obviously from the Holy of Holies perspective where he is found, he then gives a tour of the seventh chapter. Obviously, because it's related with the tabernacle. Then you find the Messiah complaining regarding those seven cities. They were not closed, neither secluded. Then comes Yohanan and he writes. And then he sends his boys over there with the Megillus and those cities are straightened out. Then he starts the relationship with the cities and Gentiles as per instructions. Until 6009. Then cities were no more. Thousand years of the seat. So we are returned to the truth, transitioning ourselves from the time of the seat of a thousand years granted to Nahashatan, and you find this in Revelation, the 20th chapter. So we are returned to the truth, and then we find ourselves in the 61st chapter of Yerushiahu. Until the 66, when the new earth then is refurbished, then we have to understand step by step. So then it's imperative studying Torah. It's absolutely important. However, people are not going to be caught up only in laws. People have to understand the shadow prophetic events, as you read then in Hebrews 10. For in the Torah there are prophetic shadows of the events to come. So then, please stay tuned, much more coming up, because we're going to study then the ramifications. Because we already have the foundation from the Torah, we have then the platform on top. We have the rest of the chapters on top of this platform, subdivided in two sections, heavenly speaking. Then the Mashiach cups, and then shofars and the
those combined they have then consequences in the earth and the very top of these comes from Yahweh then from these numbers of chapters of the 11th until the 22nd chapters there are ramifications tracing back to the prophets sections of it you'll find even in the writings and then lands back on the Torah it must land back on the Torah if your understanding does not land back in the Torah then it's out of line does the world then go into bunkers and go into caves and buying guns and generators because they have no idea what's going on but when we are able to take those scripture and then trace him back to the Torah then the world is safe and this is what Yahweh then the Creator expects from his people firstly to set apart then teaching these areas to the Gentiles and then return to the holy services this is what the Messiah expects from them. So please stay tuned. Much more coming up.